All right, gamers, today it's time to dig into the world of archaeology with Thebes. Let's check it out. To set up for the game, you're going to take your uh, player pawn of any of these colors plus red, uh, and then of course your matching marker, Put it, start it at here at the 1. You're going to start this little black time tracker right here in 1901. And then of course each player is going to get a color for each dig site they can go and explore. They're also going to get something called a time marker in the game, which I'll talk about later. Now in this game, uh, characters are going to be going around to different areas, studying up on the dig sites, and then eventually moving down into the dig sites and trying to dig for any of the treasures. And there's a bag color for each one of the treasures they're going to dig for. Now, how the game starts is whoever's on top of the stack, and at first you may just want to randomly select a starting player, but whoever's on top in a tie is going to go first. So the, here we have, starting off with a three-way tie, we've decided that green goes first. What we've also done is we've taken some of these cards from the deck and put them in the four spaces provided here on the board. Now each of these cards signify something. You could have knowledge cards, and these knowledge cards could be books of any color that match the uh, dig site. Blue, green, yellow, purple, and orange and they can come in denominations of one, two, or three. Other things you can get in the deck are these little set collecting cards. Uh, it's basically you're giving lectures. Every time you pick these up, you're going to get more points the more cards you have. Now there aren't that many of these cards in the deck. I want to say there's like nine. Uh, so it's kind of hard to get all seven, but it can be done. And as, you, as I said, the more you get, the more victory points you can score at the end of the game. You have other things called hearsay. Now this is purple hearsay for the purple dig site. And uh, this counts just as knowledge. The only difference between knowledge and hearsay is that hearsay will go away and go into the discard pile once you use it. When you get knowledge, you keep that through the remainder of the game. And I'll explain more about how this comes into play later on. You also can get things like shovels. If you collect shovels, they'll let you dig more tiles in that particular area of where you'll be, you know, excavating. And if I had two shovels, I'd get to draw an extra tile when I'm digging. Or if I could wait, was patient and had three shovels, I could get to draw two additional tiles. So those are some of the cards you have in the game. Now, how you move about the board, this isn't a victory counter, this is a time marker is what it is around the board. Because you are racing against time to do the most study and dig and get the most treasure before the end of the year 1903. And as each player circles a regular year, this is 52 weeks on the track, every time that third player crosses over, the year moves up. All right, so anyway, how we start, let's say green player's on top and they're going to get one of these cards. And now each card tells you where to go. So this one's in Paris, this one's in Rome, Berlin, and Berlin. You know what? I want to go to Rome. So as green player, I go one, two to Rome. Now I travel twice. Every time you move once, that's one week's worth of travel. So I go one, two right here. And then I would pick up my shovel. Now to pay for the shovel, I have to spend that time mark in there, three weeks. So I would move myself one, two, three, and that would be the end of my turn. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a card to replace that one. Oh, and it is a little map token here. Now what this that lets you do is each time you dig in one of these areas, you're going to have to flip open, uh, flip over one of these icons to show you've already dug there. You may not dig in the same area within the same year. So if I went to, let's say, the blue site and I dug there, I'd flip this over showing I may no longer dig in the blue site for 1901. Now once the year marker goes up, all of my tiles that have an X on it will be flipped back over and I can dig again. However, if I went to Moscow and picked up this card, this will let me flip back over one of my X's and let me dig twice in one of the sites. But what I'm going to do as the yellow player, because they're on top, they're going to go next, is I want to go to Berlin and I want to pick up those knowledge. So I would go one, so that's one week of travel, and then pick up these books. 
That's two weeks of studying this knowledge. Now this goes into the player's hand, they have it, and they go one, two. Well now it's blue player's turn, because whoever's last in the time track is going to go first, or next, I should say. And so we're going to take out another card here, and it is, oh, a miscellaneous knowledge. Now what these are, these are white pages, open books, these are closed books of different uh, colors. What you can do is you can combine some miscellaneous you know, knowledge with regular colored knowledge and add it to your score when you're digging. I'll show you why that's important in a minute. But you may never have more miscellaneous books than you have the actual color of those books. So for instance, if I had three miscellaneous here, I couldn't put them all for this dig because I only have two yellow knowledge. So that's a good one to have. So maybe blue player is going to go to Moscow, travel one, and then pick this up. Now as you see, it's worth six time. So I would have to move one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so the next player would be yellow because they're the last in the time track. And that's how it would go. You'd place another one out here. Oh, here's one more I'll show you. Uh, it is, if I go to Rome, which I'm already in Rome, so I could basically pick this up for one week if I want to. It's an airship. What this lets me do, it lets me travel from anywhere on the board to one spot to the next for free. Now this is another card I have to discard after using. Now any of those discarded cards that you use, if the deck go runs empty, you'll shuffle them back into the deck and deal over again. So things like shovels and hearsay and you know flipping over maps, uh, that will actually come back into the deck later on in the game. Now Queen Games did provide this uh, player aid to kind of tell you about researchers, hearsay, how to play it, all the special things. There's cars, there's assistants who can help you. We, we haven't seen any of those yet. Uh, there's also, there's the, there's the uh, teacher cards, a congress is what it's called there. And then you also have museum cards here. Museum cards are things that you'll shuffle in the deck later on and where you'll be able to show off your different types of treasures. And as you see, the areas denote what type of treasures. So if I was, if I had dug in Egypt and uh, Palestine and I had picked up two treasures here and one treasure here, I could go here, stay three weeks and get four points. You know, grab four points. Now what happens, these are shuffled into the deck here. Uh, the smaller ones are shuffled in the top half and the bigger ones, the more advanced ones, they're shuffled in the bottom half of the deck, or at least that's what we do. And so when they come out, they don't go here on the board, they actually go here in the museum area. So at, at each every turn, if we draw another one, we'd move it over here and then draw an additional card to uh, take that place. But as you see, the track moves it down, then over, then if no one's still gone to it and a fourth one comes onto the board, this one's pushed off the board and no one got those points. So this is another way to get points in the game is show off any of the treasures that you dug for. Now, uh, what type of treasures are in each place? Well, the game array gives you uh, ex explanations on each one of the treasures. I don't think that's necessary, but it does look nice. Uh, there are also these cards that let you know how many of what type, you know, what number treasures are in each dig. And you just put these out face up by the side of the board so that all the players can see, you know, maybe what's been pulled, how much treasure is left there, and if it's worth digging. So I keep talking about a dig. Let's go to a dig. Let's say that green player uh, is going to dig over here in Greenland here. All right, so what green player has, and this is their hand, let's say, they have, ooh, they have four knowledge plus two miscellaneous knowledge. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. They have six knowledge here for orange. So they're going to declare a dig. Let's say it took him one week. He was in Rome, right? So it took him one week to travel there. And then he's going to get his calculator out here and he's going to turn it up. And if you see, there's the numbers popping up. Now I had six knowledge uh, total. So I'm going to turn it to six. And then it's going to tell me how many weeks I have to stay there and how many tiles I can pull from the bag. So for instance, let's say I want to stay nine weeks. If I stay nine weeks, I get to pull six tiles. Now, if I had two shovel cards, I could play this one as well and draw an extra bonus tile, but I don't. So I'll have to stay nine weeks and draw six tiles. So the first thing I'm going to do is move myself up on the time track by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm going to take the orange bag and I'm going to draw six tiles from the bag. Let's see if I can count right. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, this was a terrible draw. Wow. Okay, you see I only was able to get one treasure out of all this. 
all these sand tokens that were in there, they go back into the bag. You don't discard sand tokens. Uh, so they go back into the bag for the next person. But let's see if I can do a better draw here. There you go. There's some more treasure. So this would be a typical dig. You probably, if you're the first one to dig there, you're probably going to get a lot of the treasure. You may get a few sand tokens. You keep the treasure. This will be victory points at the end of the game. You put the sand tokens back into the bag for the next player to dig through. Now also, and this goes for any of these bags here that you can dig through, you will also find knowledge to other sites. So for instance, I'm digging in blue. I may find some extra knowledge for the green site. And at the green side, I may find extra knowledge for the yellow side. And it's just a book token. And you'll take that with you and add it on to your knowledge. So I think that's very thematic that as you're digging in one place, you may find discover something that would help you dig in one of the other sites. Now, once you're done digging, as you see, he's up here. Let's say blue made a big move and they're up here. And yellow's back here. Well, yellow can take multiple turns probably before they'll have to, uh, before blue and uh, green will get to play again. For instance, let's say they want to go to Rome and get that airship. They go one, two, pick up the airship for one more point. That's three, three weeks. One, two, three. Who goes next? Yellow, because they're still last place. So I flip over another one here. Ooh, there's another yellow book. So that's in London. So I go one, two, and pick that one up for two. And then that's four. One, two, three, four. And yellow goes again. So it's a nice catch-up method to, so that no one can fall behind because whoever's last in the time track will go first. And in the case of a tie, the person on top will go first. So if yellow could find someone something that only costs two weeks, they would get to go a fourth time. So that's kind of how the game works. Now, as you go around the board, after 1903 and everyone hits this final week, then you're going to add up all the points you got during digs, all the points you got showing off your goods at museums, and of course, all the points you got from collecting these. And the person with the most points wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? Well, let me see, uh, I think I like it. Uh, once again, Queen Games, another home run with this. This is Indiana Jones without the adventure in Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the guy even looks like Indiana Jones. You're basically just going on digs, doing your research, going on digs, uh, getting artifacts for points, and then hopefully you're also showing those off into a museum where they belong. Uh, this is a really cool game. I love the time track. I, uh, one of the mistakes we made when we first played it though, we thought we had to just keep studying and studying and studying and studying so we could do a big dig. You don't have to worry about that. You don't have to have 10 or 12 you know, books of one thing. If you stay too long, you'll be the expert in yellow while everyone else is the expert in everything else. You know, you're a major expert in this, but you're, you know, have zero knowledge of the other four digging sites. You need to start digging in all of them. It's very important to know when to cut and run because the next few times we started playing it, we, we kind of got the feel for, okay, we're all watching each other. We're all making moves around the board to study. And then when that first person goes to dig, it's a madhouse. You know, we all make a mad dash for each site to dig because you want to be the first one to dig so you won't have as many sand tiles. I think that uh, gameplay, that mechanic in the game where you have to take those sand tiles and throw it back in, is so thematic, right? Because if four other players have dug in that site, what are the odds of me finding something that they didn't find? Harder, because they're dumping back in those sand tokens that I could pull up. You saw my first grab, I grabbed mainly sand. Now, luck of the draw, there's sometimes there's one treasure in there and I went ahead and dug because I didn't have any el anything else to do and I actually found the final treasure in the sand, which was very lucky. Uh, but sometimes you don't get that lucky. Sometimes you don't get what you need to show off in a museum. A lot of times I'm eyeing those museum cards going, oh, I need to dig here so I can show this off and get more points later on. So there's a big balance. And all those museum, uh, like I think I showed off all my stuff. I stopped digging because I realized there weren't that many treasures in the uh, bags, our very first game. And I started just going on museum tours and I racked up on museum points and actually ended up winning the game the first time we played. Uh, but this game is just fun. Now for fun I call it Thebes. I, I just do that and we all know it's Thebes. But uh, just a great game. I found it for super cheap. 
Uh, you probably can too. Use, you can get it for half off what it's going for retail. But uh, if you want to get brand new, get it because this is definitely a game that is worth your time. All right, gamers, that's it for now. Until next time, you know what to do. Game on.